ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to midfield for the coin toss. Tonight's honorary captain is Jeff Watts. Jeff was a member of the 1989 and 1990 back-to-back -back state championship Lindmar football teams. His senior year, he received All-Metro, All-Conference, All-State, and Elite First Team honors and played in the 1991 Iowa Shrine Bowl. Jeff was the 1991 Class 3A state wrestling champion and holds the Lindmar School shot put record. Jeff attended Morningside College on a football scholarship and his senior year was named to the All-Conference first team as a defensive lineman. Jeff is now a manager with the Aegon Global Technology Division of Transamerica. Jeff's wife, Michelle, is a 1988 Lindmar graduate. He is joined at the flip tonight by his sons, Mac and Sam, current students at Westfield Elementary. Please give a round of applause for former Lion, Jeff Watts.
located in the north end zone building. We encourage those spectators sitting in the north section of the stadium to use this stand for shorter lines and faster service. Again, those sitting in the north side of the stadium, please use the north concession. one and threes. Thank Cedar Falls is 4 and 0. Cedar Falls is ranked the number one, is the number one team in the state right now. And Limar is coming off a great win of Washington, which due to time, time constraints, we won't be able to show you in pregame, but we'll try and get that to you at halftime. We'll get ready to kick off. Number three, Austin, Austin Walter, Walter will be taking off, off tonight. With number 10, Kevin Bernard, and to hopefully at the next Peter break, Fox. we'll also be able to show you, and uh, I was able to talk to Forsyth before the game tonight. So hopefully at the next break in the action, we'll be able to show you that. As Austin Walter gets ready to kick this off, as Limar tries to knock off the number one team in the state, Cedar Falls. And the kick is off, and he squibbed it. And number 75, number 75, Jarve Clark for Cedar Falls was able to fall on it. That looked like an onside kick to start out this game. And had Lamar got the lucky bounce and it had bounced off a shoulder pad or something, that might be Lamar ball right now. We saw last week Forsyth made a lot of gutsy calls and crunch time, and that was another one. Just pick it up right where he started. So first and 10 for Cedar Rapids Washington at the Lamar 41. Excuse me, Cedar Ball is 41. Number 25, Elijah Beregard has an East tackle for about a two yard loss. 25, Eli Beregard, the ball carrier. Tackle made by number 22, Zach Martins. No gain, second down, 10. Cedar Falls gets ready to start. Number 12, Braden Longnecker throws it to, to number 26. Excuse me, number. I'm sorry, I don't know who caught that one. Like I said earlier, we are we were experiencing some Matt technical difficulties Lions, early, earlier, two. so we weren't able to show you a lot of our pregame stuff. Hopefully, we'll be able to get that to you at halftime. So third and two for Cedar Falls, and they run it for a first down at the 44-yard line. Number six. 
Jake Buck, the ball carrier, tackle made That was by number Luke six. Meyer. Jake Buck with the carry. Cedar Falls at the lead bar, 44. First and ten for Cedar Falls, and Cedar Falls actually almost lost to Waterloo West last week. They were down 16 to seven and were able to win. The only reason that game didn't go to overtime is because Waterloo West missed an extra point. And they hand it off to number 28, Jackson Nicholas. Eli Beregard, the ball carrier. Excuse me, number 25, Elijah Beregard. Down six. Once again, we are having to have technical difficulties for those who are just turning in, uh, tuning in to start this game. So we got a little late start to this one. Elijah Beregard runs it to about the 31-yard line, and it'll be third and two again. So third and two for Cedar Falls. And number 26 is stuffed at just inside the 31 yard, 36 yard line. So it'll be about fourth and one and a half for Cedar Falls and they're gonna go for it because in this situation you're too close the punt and they're too far out to kick a field goal. And Limbar stops him. And Cedar Falls turns it over on down as Limbar's defense comes up with a big stop and it'll be first down Limbar at the 36 yard line. First and 10 for Lamar, Reese Davis gets ready to take the snap. And he hands it off to Trabuco, who is gonna run it to about the 32-33 yard line. As I mentioned, there was a lot of trick plays last week for this offense. Just to show you, for a stat, Ross Limbeck. Ross Limbeck actually threw the ball twice last game. And he had a, and he was two for two for 31 yards and a touchdown. His quarterback rating was 395.2. That is incredible. As Limbeck gets the carry, and he's gonna run it to close to the 38 yard line. So that's it's gonna be 39 Lundbeck yard line. So it's gonna be about. Fourth and third and seven as Official Lamar player is down on the field. It will be third down seven. As I mentioned earlier, we had technical difficulties and we had and we got, got an interview. I got an interview with Coach Forsyth before the game. And we're gonna show you to that right now. All right, Coach, how are you guys looking to build off of last week's win? Well, we tried to have a, you know, just really put it on the kids that uh, you, you want to get one, but then you want to really work hard this week and get another one. So I think we had a really good practice this week, and uh, so hopefully we're ready to go tonight. Um, how are, also, how are you looking to stop the Cedar Falls um, offense? Well, the first thing you have to do is stop the run game. They really run the ball very well. They're really efficient on offense. So we're going to do everything we can to stop the run game, and then we'll just see how the game unfolds from there. 
All right, well, thanks, Coach, for stopping by. Hey, no problem. And we'd like to thank Coach Forsyth for spending some of his time to let me interview him before this game. Now, last week, for those of you that didn't get a chance to see it or watch it here on LTV Live Sports, it was a crazy game. Lamar had a lead 14-7 at halftime, which in the third quarter, Washington tied, and then early in the fourth quarter, they actually took the lead 21-14. to And with about a minute and 10 left, on a trick play, they pitched it out to Limbeck, and Limbeck actually ran a little bit, turned back and threw it to Reese Davis, our quarter, the quarterback. And he was able to run in for a touchdown uncontested to tie the game. And after Zach Martin's interception at halftime as number 70, number 70, Justin Green, one of the few returning starters, is down, was down. So it'll be third and seven for Limbar. Austin Walter, the, uh, excuse me, Matt Ramsey, the holder, fumbled the first snap. Austin Walter missed the second field goal, the second attempt, and he, but it was a running into kicker, and then he made the field goal to win the game. As Reese Davis takes a snap and rolls back, pressure, and there's a screen pass, and Limbeck has one guy to miss, and he's not going to get the first down. He's going to be about two yards short. That's a great tackle there by number 22, Lindbeck Nicholas DeBerg, for Cedar Falls. Fourth down two from the left So fourth and two from Lamar, 44. as the punting unit will come up. Once again, we had some technical difficulties to start out this game. And we had a uh, recap of last week's game that we wanted to show to you, but couldn't due to the technical difficulties. We'll try and get that to you at halftime. As Asa Walter, and the punt is blocked! And Cedar Falls recovers at the 39-yard line. And that was not a great start for the Lombard special team. The first attempt for Cedar Falls at the Limbar 39. And we're gonna ask the defense to get come, make another stand. As Justin Green on the sideline, it looks like you might have a center, I'm not sure. We'll try and figure it out as soon as we can. And number 25, Elijah Baragar takes off and he's gonna take it to about the 15 yard line. As you got the hit handoff from Eli Braden Longnecker. brought down by Matt Meyer and Brandon Jeffries. Coach Forsyth said he needs to, they need to stop the run early. Not a great start for the Limar defense. And play action is Braden Longnecker rolls out to his right and he underthrows number 26. Braden Longnecker's pass intended for Austin Bennett. Unfortunately, I don't have a name for you for number 26. It is not on the roster. Um, TV was provided. So, second and 10 for Cedar Falls at the Lamar 15 yard line. Uh, QB keeper and Brent Longnecker was able to break one tackle, but was tackled at about the 13 yard line. So third and nine, actually, as he was tackled at the 14. So third and nine for Cedar Falls as Lil Martin gets to once again try and make a stand. Brent Longnecker under. Under center and Elijah Barrett guard in the backfield. And the pass is broken up by number five, Brandon Jeffrey. Pass intended for Jake Buck. 
as Jake Buck was the intended receiver. Fourth down, nine. So fourth and nine as number, I think that's number two. No, number 28. No, hold on, who's kicking? All right, number two. Number two, Jacob Newman. And the kick is no good. Lamar at the 20 yard line. And Reese Davis runs it to the, about the 28 yard line. So it'll be second and about two for Lamar as Reese Davis was able on the keeper to scramble for number two about the 28 yard line. So second and two, Lamar. And don't be surprised here, Forsyth takes the shot here on second and short. Second down two. And Reese keeps it, pitches it to Limbeck, and Limbeck runs it to about the 33 yard line. And Limar's got their first first down of the game. The first attempt for Lamar at the 33 yard line. So, first and 10 at the 33 yard line. Reese Davis under center. And it looked like a false start by number 71. Ross Pierce, no, excuse me. Number 71, Kyle Haya for Lamar. All star penalty against the Lions. First down, 15. Ball of the Lion, 28. So, first down, 15 for the Lions. Again, we had some technical difficulties to start out this game. And we'll give you the recap of last week's game at halftime. Reese Davis keeps it and he runs it to about the 31 yard line. So Reece it'll be Davis about second and 12. By Riley Willett. As Limar is Excuse me. Had a blocked punt the last drive for those of you that are just tuning in. And the Lilmar defense was able to hold them, and Cedar Falls missed the field goal. So, second and 12 for Lilmar. Reese Davis under center. And play action, and Reese Davis finds number 10, Austin Burbridge. And he's Griffin Bernacki at the 47 yard line. And you find Griffin Bernanke this time, and I can't tell you how many times last week that Griffin Bernanke was wide open with no one in front of him. Reese Davis couldn't hit him. So first attempt for Lamar at the 47-yard line. And Reese Davis keeps it, keeps it, pitches it to Limbeck, and Limbeck is able to scramble back to line of scrimmage as that Reese one was a poor, was a blown up play right away as Reese Davis got caught up on the play, caught up, excuse me, got caught up with, got, got tangled 
with Nick Taruco on the first handoff and they couldn't get the option roll. So all he was able to do was pitch it to Limbeck and Limbeck was able to get back to line scrimmage. So second and 10 for Lamar at their own 47. High snap and Reese Davis keeps it and he's got room to run. And he runs the guy over and he's still going all the way down to about the 35 yard line. And he ran, he broke a tackle, ran right over someone at the 43. I was able to keep going all the way to the 35 yard line. Great run there by Reese Davis. As Justin Green, their only returning starter on the line, is out with an injury. And hopefully he'll be able to return to this one. So first to Timber Lamar at Cedar Falls 35 yard line. Reese Davis on handoff and throws it to Zach Martin. And Martin's got room to run. He's going to take it to the the 25 yard line. So close to a first down there for Lamar. And it is a first down. So first and 10 Lamar. And now we are inside Austin Walters' range as in practice he is. Um, I told me he has made a 50 yarder before. So we are in his range. Now let's see if we can get a little closer and maybe get a touchdown. Reese Davis and shotgun. Matt Meyer in motion. And Limbeck's got room to run. He's going to get gears first down at around the 14, 15 yard line. So it looks like he'll be just short of the first down. A uh, half yard short. And a great drive here so far for Limbar. As it is second in about in inches at the Cedar Falls 16 15 R line. Reese Davis from shotgun. Martin's in motion. Limbach keep no, excuse me, play action. And that pass is almost intercepted, but it fa falls to the ground. As that was a very dangerous pass there by Reese Davis. So it'll be about third and one for Limar. Look for Nick Taruco to get the carry here for Lamar. He is he is lined up in the fullback position. And no, Reese Davis keeps it and he looks like he got it. He's pretty yes, he got it. First down Lamar at around the 14 yard line. So first and ten at the at the Cedar Falls 14 yard line. As Limar is knocking on the door and they're 14 yards away for the game on the scoreboard first. Good start for the Limar offense after that poor first drive. First and 10 Limar. Reese Davis under center. Hand off to Tabuco. And Tabuco runs it, runs it to about the 10, 11 yard line. Like he ran to about the 11. So it's going to be second and seven there for Limar. Second down, seven. And that is the end of the first quarter as Lindmar is in the red zone at the end of the first quarter. That's the final play of the first quarter. The score, Lindmar nothing, Cedar Falls nothing. TV, your school, your news.
Welcome back. So second and seven, Limar Matt Meyer in motion. Reese Davis keeps it, and he's gonna run near the first down around the five yard line, maybe around Reece the four. Davis, the ball carrier, brought down by Isaac Becker. One ref has him stopped for the first down, and one doesn't. And no, it's gonna be about third, third and one, third and inches Tiger for Limar. So big spot here for the Limar offense. Third and inches at the five yard line. And keep it sneak and Reese Davis, he got the push. He fell forward first down Limar around the three yard line. Davis, so first three, goal at the Lindmar, three. First As Limar's three yards from getting on the board first against the number one team in the state. Great drive here for Limar. So first and goal, Reese Davis under center. And touchdown Limar! And it was Ross Limbach with the carry. And Limar is up six to nothing against the number one team in the state. Sorry about that, a little audio technical difficulties. So Lamar is up seven to nothing against Cedar Falls. Again, number one team in the state. Austin Walter prepares to kick it off. And he squibs it. Down to about the 16 yard line. And number 32, Derek Connerly for Cedar Falls takes it down to about the 40 yard line. Brandon Corkery returns the kickoff. As the once again, it's been a poor start for the Lamar special teams. As Back after the now the first the block Hickman. punt, um, uh, they didn't convert on the onside kick to start out the game. And now a good kick return for Cedar Falls. So seven to nothing, Limar. And that ball falls incomplete. So it'll be second and ten. Pass intended for number ten, Cedar Kevin Falls. Bernard. Kevin. Second down, ten. Kevin Bernard was the intended wide receiver. And the ball is handed off to number 25, Elijah Beregard, and there is no one in front of him. Touchdown Cedar Falls as a complete Eli defensive Beardard. mishap and no one and no one was able to stop the ball carrier as he ran right, right through untouched. Carrying 61 yards for the Cedar Falls touchdown. He was already gone by the time they realized he had the ball. So pending the extra point, Cedar Falls almost instantly ties his game back up. Let's see what the extra point. 
And the kick is good, and the game is tied. The extra point by and number two, Jacob Newton, is good. 10.40 remaining in the second Wilmar quarter. Wilmar Crowd is Glenn stunned seven, on that play. Cedar Falls, seven. So the game is tied at seven. And Cedar Falls just had to show why they're the number one team in the state. And you don't want to make excuses, but you have to wonder if part of that was Lamar's Justin Green being on the sideline. He is the veteran on that defensive line too. And he wasn't on the field and you wonder if that may have had something to do with the miscommunication. kick is up and Ross Limbeck will make the return oh no and he was up ended as he was down I, th I think he was down and they're gonna rule he was on the ground as he was completely up ended he had room to run in the last second it looked like a Cedar Falls player just dove in there and just caught him in the legs and he just did a little flip the first and ten for Lamar at the 27-yard line. As once again, we are experiencing some technical difficulties today. We are sorry for the inconvenience, and we will try to get everything back up and running as soon as possible. East Davis pitches it to Limbeck, and Limbeck tries to get away from a couple people and he's going to get back to just about the 28 yard line so he turned uh, no the 27 yard line so he turned what looked like a 5 yard loss and to about an until game back to line of scrimmage so second and 10 Lamar As Reese Davis rolls out under pressure, trying to find a receiver, and the ball is almost intercepted. An extremely dangerous throw there by Reese Davis. As number 22, Nicholas DeBurr almost picked Broken off that football. Extremely dangerous throw by Reese Davis. Third down, 10. So third and 10 for Lemar. Bruce Davis scrambles, Matt Meyer catches it and he's gonna run it to about the 35 yard line. It's gonna be about a couple, three, no he runs it to 34, which is gonna be about three and a half yards short. So it'll be fourth and about three, Lamar. Excuse me, he got to the 35 yard line, so it's actually fourth and two. Either way, Lamar has to punt it. Timeout is called Timeout Cedar Falls. Timeout Cedar Falls. Lindmar would like to thank the local area ambulance crew for donating their time and effort for all of Lindmar's football games. Again, game. we are experiencing some technical difficulties. 
Google it Peas the will mean that we will try to get everything back up and running as soon as possible. We'll try and show you the scoreboard as much as possible. So, fourth and two. As Austin Walter will punt it. And Matt Ramsey's back there for Limar. So, takes a good decent Limar bounce. And it's going to roll to close to the 30-yard line, around the 31. And that was a, an, a, an overall pretty good punt 31. for Austin Walter. That was a, that was a 34-yard punt there for Austin Walter. Once again, we have technical difficulties going on right now. We'll try and get everything back up and running in Sousa. So first and ten for Cedar Falls. Number 25, Elijah Beauregard is just stuffed there by number 15, Austin Burbridge, as he was able to get to about the 31. And so about the original line of scrimmage, and then Austin Burbridge just stood him up and drove him backwards. Second and 10 for Second and ten for Cedar Rapids. Excuse me, Cedar Falls. And the ball is up, and the pass is complete down the sideline to number 18, Cody Cody Martinez Rass. As Braden Longnecker. Uh, makes the throw. A lot of long names there for Cedar Falls. The first and ten at the Cedar Falls 48 yard line. Excuse me, Lamar 48 yard line. Green Locknecker rolls out and number 32. Number 32, Dakota Digman with the sack. And Bray Longnecker tried to get away, but Dakota Digman was having none of it. Second down, 16. So second down and long for Cedar Falls. Second down, 16 for Cedar Falls. And the ball is pitched to Elijah Barragar, and he's still running all the way to the, as he bulldozes his way all the way down to Limmar 36 yard line. First contact is right at the line of scrimmage at their own 46. And he just carried two or three guys all the way to the 36 yard line. Incredible run by Elijah Barragar. Elijah Barragard kind of stumbles getting the ball. Excuse me, that was number six. Jake, Jake Buck with the carry as he's Chibuka. able to take it to about the Lamar 34 yard line for a gain of two. two. Second and eight. Once again, we are experiencing some technical difficulties 
this evening. So we'll try and get everything back up and running as soon as possible. Second and eight for Cedar Falls at the Limart 34 yard line. The game is tied to seven. And number 38, number 38, Jason Geisler was hit right at the line of scrimmage, was able to fall fall forward for another two or two yards. So it's gonna be third and six for Cedar Falls. So four down territory right now for Cedar Falls as Lumar's defense will once again try to get a stop. Besides one play, the defense has been very solid tonight. Third and six. And it looked like number 32, Dakota Dingman, crossed off sides. So it's gonna be third and one now for Cedar Falls. for Cedar Falls and Zach Martins tried to take on Jason Geisler but Jason Geisler was able to fall Mark forward the for the first down. Great Martins. effort there by Zach Martins. And, and once again veteran lineman Lions. Justin Green is out on the sidelines with an injury. First and 10 Cedar Falls at the 25 yard line. Long necker throws it deep and there's a flag down as number 32. Jared Connolly ran, ran into the end zone but there was a flag on the field. Let's see if it's on the offense or the defense. It looks like it's gonna be pass interference. And it's holding on the defense. Is so the touchdown Lindmar. will stand and it's 13 to nothing pending the extra point for Cedar Falls. Play good for a Cedar Falls touchdown. So Cedar Falls will obviously decline the penalty and accept the touchdown. So pin the extra point by number two, Jacob Newton. Oh, the it's blocked. The holder can't handle the snap, and the conversion attempt is no good. Five twenty, and it's no good. So quarter, that's why ball, I say 13, pending the extra seven. point, because now it's thirteen. To, it stays thirteen to seven. I remember last week Cedar Falls game against, and Cedar Falls game against, excuse me, Cedar Falls game against Waterloo West. They won 17 to 16, but the only reason that game didn't go into overtime was because Waterloo West missed an extra point. So hopefully Limar will be able to actually win. Will be Cedar Falls will be on the opposite side of this game and actually lose because of an extra point. You can only hope. So 13-7 Cedar Falls and. It looks like the holdy penalty is going to be assessed on the kickoff. So. Holding penalty is assessed on the kickoff. Cedar Falls will kick from so midfield. So uh, it will be, they'll kick it off from the 50 now. And I would, and I really doubt that this, that Lumar will get a chance to return this one. as number 25, Elijah Beauregard, their running back, will kick it off. And he boots this one deep into the end zone so Matt Meyer won't get a chance to return it. Eli Beauregard's kick goes into the end zone for a touchback. Once again, we are experiencing technical difficulties this evening. 20. And we'll try and get everything back up and running as soon as possible. So 
So first and 10 for Lamar at the 20-yard line. And Reese Davis keeps it. And he's got room to run. He's going to take it for a first down at the Cedar Falls 31-yard line. Good run there for Reese Davis. As he is having a fantastic season running the football. Hey, I may be the quarterback, but it doesn't mean I can't run the ball. The first and 10 for... Lamar at the 31 yard line. Reese Davis is lined up in the shotgun with Russ Limbeck in the backfield. Zach Martin is in motion. And Limbeck is hand off the ball and he's going to run the run. And he's going to run it down to the 43 yard line. First down, Lamar. Russ Limbeck, the ball carrier, tackled by Riley Gardner. So first and 10 at the Lamar 43 yard line. At the Lindmar 43. As it's first and 10 at the 43 yard line. Line up an I form formation with Reese Davis under center. Kabuko gets the handoff and he's going to run it for no gain. Oh, no, excuse me. He'll gain one yard on the play, so it'll be second and nine. Tackle made by Alex Geary. Second down, nine. Rolls out and he completes the pass to number 80. Number 80, John Slaughterback at the Cedar Falls 45 yard line versus Tim Limar. Once again, they pick up another 12 yards. First and 10 at the Cedar Falls 45. Lamar has the ball on the run. So 11, 12, 1, 12, we'll take it. As Tabuco gets the carries, he's going to take it for a gain of about one. Reese Davis, the ball carrier. He'll be a, once again second and nine for Tackle Limbaugh. Tackle made by Dakota Pepperling. Second down, nine. Second and nine for Lamar. Davis under center. Play action. And he throws it behind Griffin Bernanke as he tried to throw it in between the defenders. And unfortunately, Griffin Bernanke was, it was way behind Griffin Bernanke. Third down nine from the Cedar Falls, 44. Third and nine for Lamar. Davis rolls out and he hands off on a running back draw to Limbeck and Cedar Falls broke up the play, but there is a flag late. Let's see what's on. If it's a late Ross hit, the then we'll be on. Be then that will be an automatic first down. And it's I'm not sure what that signal is, but it's personal foul, so it's first down, I believe. I believe that's a horse collar. Personal foul, horse collar tackle. Yes, it is a horse collar tackle on Cedar Falls. That's a personal Lions foul, first down. Right when you think the drive's the over, you get a personal Falls, foul, 32. and it's first and 10 at the Cedar Falls 32 yard line. As the drive is extended. As uh, Nick, uh, Nick Tarico missed a block, as he was unable to make the tackle. And I also was able to interview him yesterday, and hopefully we'll be able to show that to you, to you tonight. Reese Davis keeps it and he's tackled at around the 34 yard line. Reese Davis, the ball carrier. And once again, we are experiencing some technical difficulties tonight. Tackle made by Taylor and King. 
hopefully we'll be able to we are still able to show you all three all three of our cameras and able to get audio from I guess me but other than that we are unable to run any other graphics right now so we'll get everything back up and running as soon as we possibly can unfortunately that could mean the breaking your broadca broadcast at halftime as Reese Davis keeps it to around the 27 yard line but there's a flag down looks around Reece the area Davis, of the holding carrier, penalty flag on the play. yes it's holding Limar so let's see what Steve Bros wants to do here push him back or we'll take the flag looks like they're gonna take the flag so be second let's see where they fought it they'll spot it around the 43 yard line so it's going to be second and 21, nothing big, just, you know, just need 21 yards in two plays. Nothing, nothing too big. So second and 21 for Limbar. Lined up a shotgun. With Lim back in the backfield. East Davis. And he throws a little... Oh, and Limbeck gets away! And Limbeck has room to run! And Limbeck is going to take it to the 20, 27 yard line as he was able to break a couple tackles and get into the open field. It's a little dump off pass to, from Reese Davis to, in order to avoid her. And it's third and about five. Third and five for timeout taken by Limbeck. Limbeck. As they will call their first timeout. this too many more times. We are experiencing technical difficulties this evening and we will try and get everything up and running as soon as we can. All we have is our three cameras right now and the audio for me. And other than that we don't have anything else working and hopefully we'll be able to get everything back up and just working before the end of this game. Luis Davis hands it out to Limbeck. After faking it to Tabuco, Limbeck looks like he's got the first down to 21 yard, yard line. And yes, first down for Limbar. Second and 21, now it's first and 10. That was easy. Dawson Burbridge on the sideline tries to get the fans back in it. First and 10 for Limbar to 21 yard line. Limbar will try and get try and tie this game or if they can make the extra point which as we saw earlier is no given they will take the lead against the number one team in the state shotgun Jack Martin's in motion play action Reese Davis throws in and it looked like some miscommunication there and hopefully they don't call grounding Reece on that Davis one pass falls incomplete. we'll see second down 10 Looked like a miscommunication there on offense. So second and ten for Lumar, there is no flag for intentional grounding. Second and ten to twenty-one. You save us under center. Play action. Throws it deep, oh, Bernecki almost made the catch as that was a perfect throw right on the money by Reese Davis as the team get out to John Slaughterback as that was an incredible pass by Reese Davis. 
ball up to Cedar Falls, 21. Once again, Justin Green is out with an injury for this on this offensive line. So third and ten for Limbar at the 21-yard line. He saves drops back, throws it. Even Zach Martins can't make the catch as Reese Davis wanted pass interference, but he's not going to get it. Pass intended for Zach Martins. Fourth down, ten. Once again, we are experiencing technical difficulties this evening. And as Oscar Walter will line up for about a 39-yard field goal. Excuse me, 38-yard field goal here for Austin Walter. Trying to get his team within three. There is 30 seconds left in the first half. Timeout, Lindbar. So Lindbar calls a timeout. Once again, we are experiencing technical difficulties this evening. We are unable to show you anything besides our three cameras and the mic and audio. And in order to get, in order to get everything back on working, we're more than likely gonna have to have to put a break, make, have to break up your broadcast in order to get everything back up and running. As you just saw there, Justin Green standing on the sideline as he has been out since early in the game. And I will try and get get a report on that as soon as I possibly can. So, a 28-yard field goal by Austin Walter, and that kick is good. As that was a excuse me, a 38-yard field goal for Austin Walter, and that was money. That would have been good from 50. Uh, I don't know about 50, but it would have been close. As he is able to make that field goal, he gave it a good boot. And it was dead center. So 13-10, Cedar Falls. But that is big. It is now a only a field goal separating the two teams. So with 25 seconds left, Lamar's now 13 to 10. And unfortunately after halftime, we will probably have to you we'll probably have to make a break in your, our broadcast in order to get everything back up and running. And it's looking like we won't be able to get to show you the recap of last week's game at halftime. Hopefully we'll be able to get everything up and running fast enough to show you that recap for last week. As Austin Walter gets ready to kick it off. Takes it and number 14 kick, takes it to number 20 and he's got room to run as Austin Walter saves the touchdown as number 14 Carl Kramer had some room to run. So now at the 40 yard line, Cedar Falls will have 20 seconds trying to either get field goal range or take a 60 yards to get a touchdown. Lamar will probably go into their prevent, prevent defense. Maybe not, we'll see. So it'll be first pin for Cedar Falls at the 20-yard line. And they're lined up in I form, so they might just run it and go into the second half. Let's see. Oh, well, they're gonna pass it. And they have a man, and he's got room to run. Number 22, Nicholas DeBurr takes it to the 34-yard line. As uh, Cedar Falls is probably gonna take their first time out. By Austin Burbridge. Yeah, they're gonna take their first time out. So 14.3 seconds left, they'll get the ball around the 34 yard line. It's Austin Burbridge saved the touchdown. Lamar's the score is 13-10 Cedar Falls with 15 seconds left in the first first half. As you 
me the Limar huddle, defensive huddle there. As they're going to try to keep Cedar Falls off the scoreboard to take this 13 and take the 13 10 score into halftime. They're down three. And hopefully they can keep it a one field goal game at halftime. We'll see. Once again, we apologize for our technical difficulties this evening. And hopefully we will be able to get things up and running as soon as we possibly can. 14.3 seconds as they had the ball at the 34 yard line. First 10, Cedar Falls. And Herbeck rolls out. That is Longnecker with the scramble. She's able to get out of bounds at around the 30 yard line. Braden Longnecker is the ball carrier. And they have one timeout left. I would not be surprised if they run the ball here. No, they're just going to kick the field goal now, it looks like. I wasn't going to be surprised if they just tried and. Second down six, the ball at the left. No, it looks like they are going to run it. No, they are going to kick it. Excuse me. Number 25, Elijah Barragard, who apparently is their long range kicker, as he will be attempting a 47 yard field goal as Limbar will, I guess, ice the kicker, as, as you Limbar. would say, with eight seconds left. The Lions of Pony Limbar will get the ball back, and I wouldn't be surprised if Forsyth sent someone back there, and you can't return anything from the end zone. You have to, it has to be in between the zero yard line and the zero yard line. So Price and Jack Martin out to about the one or zero, or just inside the end zone, and just say you can't back up from right there. You have to stand there. So I wouldn't be surprised if we did that. Once again, we apologize for the technical difficulties this evening. As all we have up and running right now are our cameras and audio. And unfortunately, we will probably have to take a break from the broadcast in order to get everything up and running again. So second and six, as they look like they're lining up to run the ball here. They're gonna probably, no, they're gonna pass it. And number 18, Number 18, Isaac Borker can't complete it. And I think that was more than anything, just an attempt to make sure Limar doesn't get the ball back. Third down, six. So it'll be third and six. As, and once again, it'll be a 47 yard field goal for Elijah Barragard. Five seconds left, so this will more than likely be your last play of the first, of the first half. The kick is up and no good. Hook to right. 48 yard field goal attempt. And the 48 yard field goal is no good. Cedar Falls 13. So Cedar, so Cedar Falls will have a three point lead going into halftime. Once again, we are experiencing technical difficulties this evening, and we will more than likely have to take, take a break in our broadcast and hopefully get everything back up and running as soon as possible.
Ladies and gentlemen, the choices we make in our lives determine the course of our lives. The Marching Lions make that point in their state contest show, Shattered Dreams. It's a musical legacy of talented, gifted artists. And we're back as we were able to get everything back up and running. And we're sorry for the break in your broadcast, but like I said earlier, we are going to show you the we are going to interrupt the marching band performance to show you the recap of last week's game over Washington.
fell on and you Lemar fall on it. Yes, they did. So they are going to do this again. So Lemar will have another shot at this. And they still get another shot. And the kick is up. No good. And he misses it. But there is a flag down on the field. There is a flag down on the field, folks. And I think this might be running into the kicker and rubbing the kicker. Let's see. But Austin Walter was on the ground. Rub, running, running into the kicker and rubbing the kicker. I'm not sure. Let's see here. The third opportunity. Four to six, a 13-yard field goal. Austin Walter, can he do it? Kick it is up. And it's good. And Lombard wins. And just like that, Lombard's got their first win of the season. And welcome back. As you saw, that was a pretty intense game last week. As Lamar was able to beat Washington overtime, 24 to 21. And Cedar Falls is the number one team in the state. I've mentioned this several times tonight. And I mentioned earlier that I was able to talk to Nick Tabuco earlier, earlier yesterday. And, hold on, we'll try and get it up as soon as possible. And, I, um, well, just you can just watch it. Here we go. Nick, what was it like, you know, getting the win off your back this week against Washington? First win is always the toughest one. Uh, we had a few tough games before Washington last week and a couple of close games in overtime that we lost. And uh, knowing last week that we came and, uh, and finished and actually won the game was a big step for us moving forward. All right, now you're playing the number one team in the state, Cedar Falls. What do you guys think you need to do and how um, to get the win and the upset? We need to uh, don't make mistakes, such as uh, don't get penalties, offsides, like um, false starting, stuff like that. Stuff that hurt us that we hurt ourselves doing. If we uh, play a game like we can play and don't make uh, mistakes, like dumb mistakes that hurt ourselves, uh, I think we could have a good chance to win this game. All right. Well, thanks, Nick, for stopping by. Um, you can see Nick Taruka on the Lions play Cedar Falls, the number one team in the state, Friday night. I'm Michael Morrell, LMTV Sorts. It's Cambridge team. The team will be hosting its annual fall dance camp this October 12th and 13th. Here is uh, Limar Varsity Palms as we'll get back to the halftime show. And now, the fabulous Limar Palms!
Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the track in front of the home stands for a special presentation. Since 1983, the Cedar Rapids Gazette has honored the top area high school athletes with its annual Athlete of the Year Awards. Past Lindmar winners of the award have been Ryan Driscoll, Jay Borschel, and Kia Stokes. Tonight we honor the school's fourth winner of the award. Representing Lindmar High School is Athletics Director Scott Maymans and Associate Athletic Director Tanya Moe. Representing the Gazette is Nick Puglisi, and representing the winner are his parents, Ellis and Cheryl Page. Marcus Page led Lindmar to four top four finishes at the state basketball tournament, including the Class 4A championship in 2011. He is the Metro's all-time leading career scorer with 1,700 points and average 28.4 points per game last season. He played in the McDonald's All-American game in Chicago, the first Metro prep to do so since 1984. Marcus is now a student at the University of North Carolina, where he will begin his collegiate career for head coach Roy Williams and the Tar Heels this winter. In addition to Marcus receiving a plaque, Lindmore High School is the one-year recipient of a traveling trophy that will be in the school's trophy case through the remainder of the school year. Congratulations to Marcus Page and his family. Lindmore is very proud of you. City West leads to Buke Senior 28 to nothing. Waterloo East 17, Cedar Rapids Jefferson 10. And in Class 3A, Decora leads Merrick West Delaware 16 to 13. That game also at the half. Welcome back. Uh, Cedar Falls gets ready to kick it off. As you just saw Marcus Page, you know he couldn't be here tonight. He's in Chapel Hill right now getting, as he prepares for the North Carolina season. He was honored tonight as the Iowa Basketball Player of the Year. the kick 
And Matt Meyer returns it, and he had a little room to run, and he, but he's tackled at the 25. Matt Meyer returns the third quarter kickoff. As to the landmark, we just got word to, I just got word earlier, and it's looking like Justin 10. Green is is more likely not going to be able to return. He's listed as doubtful. So it'll be first and ten for Lindmar to. 25 yard line. As Reese Davis had a fantastic first half. Reese Davis under center, keeps it, and he's gonna break a couple tackles and take it to about the 31 yard line. So a gain of six. So it'll be second and four for Limar. Reese Davis, the Lion Bow Carrier, stop made by Nick Clark. Eight of six, second down four. Right, so it's second down four for Lamar. As Reese Davis is gonna line up in shotgun. Second and four. And and the ball is, is the snap is fumbled and Cedar Falls recovers it. And uh, just a poor right, communication the by the center and Lindmar Reese Davis. Really it looks like number, I think number 55, right, number 55, Andrew Holiday was our center, but I'm not sure, so don't just go scapegoating. I'm not really sure who the center was. So we first in 10 for Cedar Falls at the 21 yard line. It looked like they had some miscommunication. Uh, before they went into the huddle on who was on the field. So it'll be first and 10 for Cedar Falls. And number 30, looked like number 36, Nicholas Clark on the run, yes, as he ran it to about the 13, 12 yard line. So it's about a gain of eight or nine. So it'll be second and two-ish. Second down one for Cedar Falls. And once again, Clark gets it and he's gonna take it to about the 10 yard line for a Cedar Falls Nick first down. Again, the ball carrier, tackle made by Luke Meyer. First down for Cedar Falls, first and goal, just inside the Lindmar 10. So first and 10 for Lindmar. Clark gets the ball again. He takes it to about the seven yard line. So excuse me, it's first and goal. So now it's second and goal. Nick Clark, the ball carrier. Luke Meyer and Sam Nowak on the tackle. Second and goal from the seven. So, take the snap and Clark gets the ball again and he's gonna take the ball to about the four yard line. five-yard line. The Mar defense is hoping they can make a stand. Clark in the backfield. Clark gets it and touchdown Cedar Falls. 19-10 to Cedar Falls pending the extra point. 36, Nick Clark carries four yards for the Cedar Falls touchdown. And 
Cedar Falls will get ready to kick it. It is Jacob Newton with the kick. Kick is up and it's good. It was kind of close, handy on the right side, but it was good. And we'll be right back after this very quick commercial break. After this joy ride, I'm out of the crash dummy business for good. But Vince, it's a great job. Heck, they'd have to pry me away from it. Anybody home? Larry, they do pry you away from it. Oh, yeah. For years, I've been eating steering wheels. For what? To prove how safety belts save lives. But thousands die every year in car accidents because they don't buckle up. Vince, we're dummies. We don't wear safety belts. Larry, you really know how to hurt a guy. Hit it! Yeah! Number 25, Elijah. Number 25, Elijah Barragard will get ready to kick it off as the ball fell over before um, before he could kick it. It happened twice, and they had to put a holder down to hold it. Ball stays up, and Barragard hits a swip. Barragard hits a squib kick. Meyer takes it, and he is tagged from behind at the 25-yard line. He Once again, they had some room, room from behind, but someone from the side was able to just trip him up. So first and 10 for Lamar. Lined up in shotgun, Reese Davis, the quarterback. Matt Meyer in motion. Limbeck gets the carry. He's got he's gonna run his way down to the 34-yard line, so it's gonna be second and one. Cross Lindbeck, the ball carrier, tackle made by Riley Willett. And it is nine, it is 20 to not, not 20 to 10 right now, Cedar Falls. Martin's in motion, pitch to Limbeck. He's got room to run. He's gonna get the first down to about the 37 yard line. Cross Limbeck, the ball carrier, tackle made. Now earlier at halftime, we showed you that recap first and you saw that tying touchdown on the trick play through Reese Davis. That talked to Forsyth after the game. And he said this, it wasn't him to pick the play. It was his offensive coordinator. And he walked up and asked him and said, hey, can you pick a play? And he said, hey, you're the offensive coordinator. It's your call. And he called in and Lamar tied the game as it's first and 10 for Lamar at the 37-yard line. And Reese keeps it, trying to get away from, from number 18, Isaac Bacher. And he does. He takes it to 42 and a big collision there for him and number 22 Nicholas DeBurr. Gain of four, second down six. So it'll be second and six. Lamar really wants to at least get some points here on this drive. Get it back to a one possession game. When you're place, facing a team like Cedar Falls, you don't want you don't want them to get a big lead on you. You want to keep it close. Martin's in motion. Limbeck gets the carry, and he's going to take it, runs over someone. He's going to take it to about the 46-yard line, 45-yard line. Cross Limbeck, the ball carrier. So it's going to be third and about one and a half. Yeah, Pepperling with the tackle, third down two from the Lion, 45. Big play here for Limbar. Limbeck 
Ruko with the carry, and he's going to get the first down and, a couple, and add a few more yards, too. He's going to take it down to the 49-yard line, as it'll be first and 10 for Limar. Martin's in motion. Limbeck with the carry. And a loss of one as he's tackled at the at midfield. So second and eleven for Lamar. 20 to, 20 to 10 with just over six minutes left in the first in the third quarter. Reese Davis in shotgun. Martin's in motion. A little snap. And Martin's got it. And he's got room to run down the sideline. He's gonna take it inside the four, inside the 40 to about the 37 for a first down for Limbar. Taken out of bounds by Riley Carter. Play good for a Lion first down at the Cedar Falls 37. So first and 10 for Limbar. Lined up in shotgun. Meyer in motion. And Limbach gets the carry and he's gonna get tackled for a loss of one. So it'll be second and 11 for Limbar. Ross Limbach, the ball carrier. Tackled by Riley Gardner. Second and 11. And I promise this will be the last time I mention this tonight. We really apologize for the technical difficulties earlier today. Reese Davis drops back. And number eight, John Slaughterbeck with the catch. And he's going to take it down to the 33. And that's a yard short. And a tough spot for Limbar as he was spotted just a yard short third of the down first down. So it'll be third and one. From the Tiger, 28. They're really in around four down territory. Although, Walter did make one from from just a little inside this. As, well, as the QB sneak by Reese Davis is right next to the Reece first Davis down. The Let's see where they spot it. <coughs> First down, Limar. First down. On the Cedar Falls, 26. So first and ten, Limar. Reese Davis under center. And Limbeck gets a carry as he takes it down to the 20. You know, some of these fakes that Limar does, it's hard for me to keep track of who gets the ball. It seems like right when you think you see every scene out of Forsyth's playbook, he pulls out this play that you've never seen before. So second and about three for Lamar. And I think it was Reese Davis with the carry. Let's see. No, so it was, Davis, yeah, Reese Davis with the carry. Huge tackle at the 18. It's going to be third and one again. Third now definitely in field goal range. 18. And it's actually with the, with the spy, it's more like third and closer to third and two. It's a another tough spot for Limar. So need about two yards. 
And surprisingly, Lemar is lined up in the shotgun. Martin's in motion. And Lemar gets the ball, and he's got room to run. He's going to take it to about the 11 yard, just inside the 11 yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for Lemar after a great run and great blocking by the Lemar offensive line. Stripped up by Braden Longnecker. First and 10 at the Cedar Falls 11. So first and ten for Lamar. They're a good carry there by Limbach. First and ten. Meyer in motion. And Reese Davis keeps it. And he's tackled around the 14 yard line. And that play was really blown up. So it's going to be second and around 13. Loss of two, second down 12. So, Lamar, you, if they can score a touchdown, they can really keep up and can keep up with Cedar Falls. It really gets in the message that they aren't going anywhere. Martin's in motion. Uh, Reese rolls out right, avoids pressure. Now he's going to run it. And he breaks the breaks the tackle, and he's going to take it just inside the ten yard line, around the ten yard line. So it's going to be about second, third and nine for Lamar. And we'll see, wait and see the play call here for Forsyth. Third and nine for Limar. Fire in motion. Reese Davis rolls. And he scrambles. And he has to break a tackle and he gets it to or back to line of scrimmage. So it's going to be fourth and about nine. And there is an injured Washington player on the sideline. So before Walter kicks his field goal, we will take a very quick commercial break. And we'll be right back. LMTV Live Sports wants you. We are looking for new members to join our team, run some cool equipment, just like the pros, and have fun doing it. See Mr. Fi in the LMTV studio before school to find out more. LMTV Live Sports, we are Linmar. If you could have another chance, what would you do differently? They give me the wrong pizza. I got pineapple on this. <laughs> Sick man. I didn't order it. Did I? <laughs> Think. Always wear a seatbelt. LMTV Live Sports wants you. We are looking for new members to join our team, run some cool equipment, just like the pros, and have fun doing it. See Mr. Fi in the LMTV studio before school to find out more. LMTV Live Sports, we are Linmar. And welcome back. As Austin Walter will get ready to kick a 25 yard field goal. The kick is blocked. No good. The kick was blocked by number 22, field Nicholas DeBerg. Cedar Falls takes over. 
first and ten at the, the Tiger 20. So first and first and ten for Cedar Falls at the 20 yard line. Now there's been a blocked punt, blocked field goal, and a great return for Washington. Rough, rough game for special teams so far. So first ten for Cedar Falls. And Jake Buck gets to, Jason Buck gets to, no, Jake Buck gets to carry it, and the Lamar defense tackles Jake him for Buck a four yard loss. For a loss by Luke, Meyer. Luke Meyer with the tackle. Loss of four, second down, 14. Second 14 for Cedar Falls. And they hand the ball off to number 25, Elijah Beauregard. Eli Beauregard, the ball carrier, tackled by Austin Burbridge. That's the final play of the third quarter. The and that's Cedar it in the Falls third quarter. Lamar is still down ten, two possessions, 20 to 10. And hopefully that, that missed field goal, that blocked field goal does not come back to haunt this Lamar football team. The defense has really done their job so far. Yes, they've given up three touchdowns, but the defense has played pretty well. It's not the defense that's, that is why we are down this game. The defense has played great. It's been um, inability to convert on special teams and get, get points on the board. They've had some good drives, but the offense is only able to put some points on the board for Lamar. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break. Texting is cool. Driving is cool. Texting and driving, not cool. Third and 12 for Cedar Falls. Fall start. Maybe an illegal motion, let's see. Call start on Washington. Third down, 17. So third and 17 for Cedar Falls. First play of the fourth quarter is about to begin. And then the ball is thrown deep, and the pass is completed. The Burr with the catch, a great back shoulder throw by Longnecker. The pass complete to Brandon Corkery. Tackle made by and a, and and a 23 Tiger yard 36. gain for, for Cedar Falls as Lumar really needs to get this team off the field so the offense can put some points up. It is still a two possession game. First and 10. And a little halfback draw there. And, and Beauregard is stuffed after about two, two yards. Luke Meyer. Meyer again with the tackle. Second and eight. Gain of two, second down eight. <laughs> second and eight for Cedar Falls. Second 
Second and eight for Cedar Falls. That rolls out, and the ball is tipped. And Matt Meyer with the play, great play to not let number 10, Kevin Bernard, um, catch the tipped ball. The so third and eight for Cedar Falls. 11 minutes and five seconds left in the fourth quarter. Lamar needs a stop here to get the offense back on the field. Third and eight for, for Cedar Falls. Big play here. Barragard with the carry. And he's only gonna get it one on the play. So great stop, great stop by the defense. And the Lamar offense will get the ball back. Matt Meyer will go back to return. Lamar defense is ready to play for the fake. Fun is up. Matt Meyer calls for the fair catch at the 20 at the 30 yard line. So first and ten, Lamar will be right back after this very very fast commercial break. If you could have another chance, what would you do differently? So first and ten, Lamar and and Ross Lumbeck with the carry, and he takes it to about the 37-yard line. Lamar's played very well so far today, especially with losing your best seven, your best and three. most experienced lineman early on. Justin Green was hurt very early in this game and hasn't been able to return and is listed as doubtful to return right now. Reese Davis under center. And Reese Davis keeps it and he's gonna take it to the 48, but 49, 48 yard line. But there is a flag down at around the 40 yard line. Let's see what the call is. Holding on offense. The flag landed around the 40. So it's probably gonna be about second and 10 for Lamar. And that will negate a great run there by Reese Davis. And that is what happens, and that's a very tough break for Lamar, as that was a great run, great blocking, and the flag was thrown very late. So the Reese Davis was already passed when the holding, passed the, passed the flag, past the line of scrimmage, or in other words, past where the flag was thrown when the flag was thrown. So he was already passed, so the holding didn't need to happen. The, the lineman could have let go at that point. That's what's frustrating about those calls, because that is just a situation where a lineman didn't keep didn't keep his eyes on where the ball was, and he held when he, sh when he shouldn't really. So second and 10 for Lamar. Reese Davis rolls out. Throws it to Limbeck and Limbeck is hammered at the 30 yard line. And they're gonna mark him at just, in, just past the 30 yard line. So it's gonna be third and a long, very, very long nine. Third down, 10. So third and 10 for Lamar. They really need a conversion here because there is only nine minutes left and they are down two possessions. Reese Davis with play action. He hit as he throws, but he finds John Slaughterbeck. John Slot, no, excuse me. That was, that was, that was caught by Griffin Bernecki. And we mentioned him earlier. He had a, he had a, what could have been a fantastic game last week. Got open several times and where he probably would have scored, but Reese Davis wasn't able to find him. He found him twice already today. 
So first and 10 for Lamar at the 42 yard line. And the option and Reese Davis is gonna keep it and take it back to the line of scrimmage. So it'll be second and 10, second and nine Lamar. He gained, was able to gain a yard. And that was and that was a pretty good throw there by Reese Davis as he was hit as he threw it. And you know that's to be frustrating there for for Justin Green. Reese Davis rolls to his right, throws it, and it's complete to Matt Meyer, who's going to take it to about the 48-yard line. So it's going to be third and four for Lamar. And you wonder, with only, with only eight minutes left, just under eight minutes left, the fourth side thinks it's four down territory here. You really need to score on this drive. You got two chances to gain four yards. See what they decide to do here. And he's lined up in the shotgun, four wide receivers. And it doesn't look like he's gonna be going with the motion, but there are three, there are trips down. And it's gonna be a halfback draw. And Lundbeck's got room to run. And he's gonna take it to the 38 yard line. First down, Limar. A great call by, great call by Forsyth. He called that play earlier in the game, but that play was actually broken up and we lost, broke it up and we lost like four yards on that play. This time we gain, this time we were able to gain 14. So first and 10 Lamar at the 38 yard line. Getting pretty near the, uh, Walter's field goal range. He stays rolls to his left. Throws it deep to Matt Meyer. And Matt Meyer just out of his reach. Pass intended for Matt, Matt Meyer, Meyer, I think, went up a little early, but he got up gimpy. He's limping Second off the field. So, second and 10 for Lamar. Lined up in shotgun. East Davis keeps it. He's able to get away from a defender. Now he's scrambling down to around the 33 yard line. Maybe around the 34. And the Seed Falls player is slow to get up. And they're going to have to call an injury timeout there. Official timeout when play resumes, it will be third down six. And it is number 36, Nicholas Clark, down on the field. We'll be right back after this very quick commercial break. Everyone has friends. There's online friends. Friends to go out with on a Saturday night. Friends to hang out with and do nothing. Friends who show up on moving day. And then there are the friends who'll be there if someone is dealing with a mental illness. Are you one of those friends? So third and six for Limar, as it looked like number 36, Nicholas Clark took a uh, hit to the head on that play. Third and six, really close to Walter's field goal range. Limbeck gets the carry, he's, he's running and he's gonna be very close, but it looks like he is short of the first down and now it is decision time for Forsyth. And it looks like he's gonna go for it. It would be about a 46 yard field goal. Remember in practice, there is not a win tonight, but in practice, Walter did make a 50 yarder, but they are going to go for it. Fourth and one, this could be the game right here. 
And let's see. And he falls close. And this is going to be very, very close. Right on the line. It's, first, it's really the first time tonight. And they're going to call for a measure. It's really the first time tonight that on a QB sneak, they did gain three or four yards. And you know it's close when neither side is really signaling that they think they, they were right. They got it. So very close right now. This is a huge measurement. See, and... And it is just short. You can see it there. That was so, so close. And with just under six minutes left, that could be huge right there. Just that little inch that this is the first time on a, on a, on a sneak that we, Limar has not has not fallen forward. They fell sideways, and that could be the difference in this ball game. We'll see. Now we have to count on the Limar defense. Number 25, and a great tackle by Zach Martin as Beauregard was tackled on the play. Zach Martin with a fantastic tackle. He doesn't make that tackle. Long that is two, first down and down. way more, maybe a touchdown. And it is going to be second and 13. Just under five and a half minutes left. Lamar will probably get the ball with just uh, with about four minutes left and they are gonna have to hurry on offense if they are able to hold them right here. They cannot let them get a first down. And it, and Barragard gets the ball and he's tackled around the line of scrimmage. It's gained a two actually. So he's almost back to the original line of scrimmage. So it's gonna be third and a long and 10 for Cedar Falls. Third down, 10. third down and 10. Just under five minutes left. I wonder if Forsyth will use his first time out they're able to stop him on a run play. You see your falls, you cannot go out of bounds or have an incomplete pass if you decide to pass. And quarterback rolls out. That's Longnecker and he is gonna be tackled around the 32 and Forsyth calls his first time out. So with four minutes and just over four and a half minutes left, Lamar will, it's fourth and six for Cedar Falls, and Lamar will get the ball back. We'll be right back after this very quick commercial break. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. That's a line of desks more than four miles long. We can keep students in school. Visit boostup.org and take the first step. Fourth and six, and uh, Cedar Falls gets ready to punt it. Punt is up. Matt Myers signaling for the fair catch. And he muffed it! Oh no! And let's see who falls on it! Cedar Falls has it. Unbelievable. So Cedar Falls will keep the ball at the 33-yard line 
with just over four minutes left, and that could be catastrophic for Limar. And Renekki, excuse me, yeah, Beauregard, excuse me, is tackled around the 29 yard line. So gain of four, second and six. Meyer and Nick Chamuco on the tackle. Second down, six. And Lamar has to have a stop here. Second and six. Barragard with the ball. And it looked like there was Dakota Digman just saved, no, excuse me, it was number 52, Luke Meyer with the tackle. And that saved the first down. It could have saved that ball game for Limbar. A huge play right here. Third down. And if you're Cedar Falls, you might think about going down, being fourth down territory. Third and three. Barragard has to carry. And that is, it looks like he's close to a first down. Let's Nick see. Yes, yeah, first Luka. down Cedar Falls at the, and he's tackled at the 22 yard line. First and 10, Cedar and Falls that, that could 22. be it for Lamar. First of ten, ball start on Cedar Falls. Ball start against Cedar Falls. First down, 15 from the Lions, 27. I've seen several times and several times in the second half where Justin Green asked the trainer to come back on Jill uh, to come back on the field and she was shaking her head. She wasn't having any of it. And Longnecker carries in. He's tackled for a gain of about one. So it's going to be second and about 14 from the 26 yard line. And there's just over a minute and 50 left. And Forsyth is staring at the clock and he's thinking, when does he use his timeouts? I think he's gonna wait and if they're able to hold him here on second down, they'll probably use his, his one of his last two. He has two, he'll probably try and stop the clock and hopefully they can score and then get an onside kick. And Cedar Falls is, with the run and touchdown Cedar Falls. And Cedar Falls is up 26 to 10. And that right there may have been the knockout punch for Lamar. Carries 26 yards for the Cedar Falls touchdown. A minute 18 left and Lamar is down 26 to 10. Pending an extra point. And now a lot of the Limbar fans are leaving their seats. Great effort tonight by the Limbar football team and the extra point is good and that could very well be your ball game because now it is a two, three possession game. Now this game is definitely not over but they're going to need a touchdown, a touchdown, a touchdown onside kick, touchdown onside kick field goal. Or you could have the field goal in any one of those spots and then get a touchdown to end it. Whatever, but they have a minute 18 to score two touchdowns and a field goal. And also, in that time, they also have to have two 
on psychic conversion. So the task is very steep for Limar. Minute 18 left, Lamar has two timeouts. And a lot of Lamar fans are leaving their seats. Number 25, Barragard. Elijah Beauregard will kick it off. And a little squib kick. And Matt Meyer with the return. Matt Meyer's got some room to run. He made a, he broke a tackle and was and fell down at the 45 yard line. Minute 11 left. So 71 seconds to score 17 points. They have two timeouts. And all the routes you do are either going to have to be a first down and a spike or a route to the outside like an out route. That would be preferable and save you down and stop the clock. So it's all on Reese Davis here. First and ten. Reese Davis drops back and he number 12 Matt Ramsey with the catch. And that will be first and ten as the stop clock will stop. Now Lamar will have to hurry and need to call a player to see what they're going to do. First down for the Lions at the Cedar Falls 45. Davis spikes the ball to stop the clock, second down 10. So just under a minute left, 59.8 seconds. And second and 10 for Lamar at the 45 yard line. Reese Davis rolls to his right. Steps up and finds Trabuco there. And Lamar will have to call their first time out. I think that was Haruka, let's see. No, Zach Martins. Zach Martins comes up a little gimpy. He's had a bad ankle all season. And it looks like he's reaching for his tailbone. That is not what Limar needs. They have three returning starters from last year. Justin Green has already been out since early since early for in the first quarter. And now Zach Martins is coming up a little shaky. So third and four, Limar has one timeout left. Down 17 points, and about 50 seconds left. This game was tied at 10, at 10 points, I believe. And since then, Cedar, Cedar Falls has scored 17 straight points. Lamar needs a, needs a stop, needs, excuse me, needs a a touchdown here. Luis Davis rolls to his left to draw a play to Limbeck and they're gonna have to call a timeout. They were hoping he could get the first down and they could, then they could spike it. He didn't get it. They had to waste their last timeout there. Playbook's really open here because if you run it and get the first down then you can go up and spike it. If you pass it get the first down then Bounds will get the first down, then you can spike it, or if they get out of bounds, they can stop the clock. But no timeouts left for Lamar. It is 27 to 10, and it is fourth and three. The last time the Limor offense will be able to will get a chance to talk to their coaches unless there is an injury. Reese Davis will line up under center. 
And Reese Davis keeps it, and he is going to get the first down, and he's going to try and get to the ground as soon as possible, and he does. 32-yard line. Uh, Lamar will line it up. Let's see if they have a play already lined up or they have a spike. There's a flag late, and that might be a personal foul on. Yeah, unsportsmanlike conduct on Cedar Falls. And if you're the coach of Cedar Falls, that is inexcusable because that stops the clock, and Lamar gets 15 yards. Good chance to draw up a play. See what Forsyth has drawn up here. Yeah, it looks like it will run at at the at the whistle. Playing the penalty gives Lindmar a first and ten at the Cedar Ball seventeen. And Ruth Davis fights it. I don't quite understand. There was plenty of time to pick a play there. So second and 10 for Lamar at the 17 yard line. Down 27 to 10. 34 seconds left. You got four seconds to get a playoff. Just Davis rolls to his left, pressure on his backside. He has to scramble and he is tackled and that is probably the game because the clock is we're going to lose a lot of time here as they try to get a spike in there's a flag on the field I think that was a false start we'll see or maybe they weren't really set yet let's see yeah illegal motion Lamar they, they were never set they tried to get the clock stopped So oh, fourth and 17, or third and 17, third and 13, uh, third and 16, I don't know. They still haven't really made it very clear. Third and 18 for Lamar, 14 seconds left, down 27 to 10. These Davis rolls to his right. Up and throws it out of bounds to Matt Ramsey. And now it'll be fourth and 18. It was already fourth down. Fourth down, 18, the ball at the Cedar Falls, 25. Eight seconds, eight seconds left for Lamar. Davis on play action, throws it deep. No one was there. And that will be a turnover on downs for Limbar. And that will be it. As all of what the wait on now is for the Cedar Falls offense to take a knee. And rough game, the rough second half for Limbar. But overall, I think Limbar played very, pretty, pretty well. And they played great in the first half. And it was just. They were overmatched. Cedar Falls is the number one team in the state for a reason. And Limar unfortunately just wasn't able to pull one out. A lot of a lot of inter injuries as they lost their number one offensive lineman. But rough game for Limar. Not a lot went their way. Could have very it could, they, a couple breaks here and there. Chance Lamar has a chance in this game, but it will. But the final score is 27 to 10.
So the final score is 27 to 10. And Reese Davis, Lombard's quarterback, had a very, a very effective uh, first half and really played good in the second half. So unfortunately, Limar wasn't able to pull it out tonight. But they had nothing to be ashamed of. It is the number one team in the state. They are number one team in the state for a reason. And we apologize to the er, earlier for the technical difficulties. And also, you can check out our brand new YouTube channel at Allen TV Sports. And you can also check us check us out at Ustream. The LM, TV no, Ustream and the LM TV Live Sports channel. You can also go to YouTube and check out the LM TV channel where we post all of our daily announcements. As you see, the final score there, 27 to 10. You can also follow us on Twitter at LM TV News. Rough game here for Limar tonight. You can also check out my weekly interviews with other Limar players on the uh, Limar football website. And I believe it's LimarLionFootball.com. You can check Google, Google Limar Lions Football. You can pull up the website and you can see all my Meet the Lions interviews. And so... That will be, that will, that's our broadcast for tonight. 27 to 10, Cedar Falls with the victory. Slimar was not able to pull one out. Thank you and good night.